Hello, everyone. I am your host, Lisa, and welcome to Single in a Small Town podcast. It's a conversational podcast discussing dating relationships and all the shenanigans in between. Um, today, if you like my content, please like and subscribe on YouTube, Single in a Small Town. And don't forget Instagram and Facebook, Single in a Small Town underscore podcast. Um, I'm not an expert in dating or relationships. There will always be a difference of opinions depending on who's I'm interviewing that day, whoever my guest is. Um, so that's the beauty of being a human being. So come join me down the rabbit hole of dating and relationships. Um, today, my guest is James. He is living in a neighboring single town or a small town, excuse me. Um, and James is a delivery driver, a spray paint artist, as well as a plant connoisseur. And uh, he's become a dear friend of mine. So I brought him on this episode. He has a lot of good insight. And welcome, James. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks. So um, we were talking a little bit about the topic of online dating, and James has some opinions about online dating. So I do. Uh, for example, um, dating apps, uh, I find them to be horrible. Um, They're pretty bad. They are. They're bad for both sexes, and uh, I feel like it's a completely different experience for both, both parties. Uh, where women, they basically, just about anyone that they're going to swipe right on, they're probably going to match. And you just basically have to figure out which one of those guys is going to be like the least like a dick. And they're all bad. They're all bad choices. And you just got to figure out eh, which one, which one is not going to be horrible. That's how I feel. And where guys... You feel that way for the female side? That's how I feel for the female side. I, I don't really feel that bad. Okay. That, I just feel, I feel for that side. And then guys... We don't get nearly as many matches. We don't get to just be like, oh, which one do I want to go on a date with and swipe right on them? Believe it or not, Lisa, we swipe right so much in order to get a match. And it's ridiculous. Uh, most people, I don't even think, know that we actually have a limit to how many swipes we're allowed. So I could swipe right, not saying I do this, not saying I don't. I could swipe right until I run out of matches or swipes while I'm driving, not even looking at the phone. I will run out. I got a question. What particular dating app is this that you're talking about? Uh, that would be Facebook. That would be Bumble. That would be uh, Hinge. They don't give you a lot. Uh, and uh, definitely Tinder. They, they don't give you a lot. Really? They, you will run out. Um, I don't even know if they have a limit for women to do that, but men, they definitely do. And it's, it's gotten to the point where it sucks for guys because we don't even get to, it's pointless to even read profiles because if we don't read the profiles, like we're not getting matches. So why would we even waste our time on the profiles? I'll see a girl that I like. I'm like, oh yeah, I really would like to meet with that person. I would like to match with that person. But if nothing ever happens as far as getting a match, I mean, it's so few and far between, like literally maybe one out of 50. Do you feel like there's a lot of phony profiles out yes, there? Yes, yes. I feel there's phony profiles and I feel like guys have to be careful of scammers too because I've had experiences where girls will just come out and they'll say, oh, let's meet up. Right away they say that, uh, stop by and bring a bottle of wine or something like that. I've never met you before. And then I, if I play oh. along, if I say, well, no, I don't want to, well, come on over and, and – uh, but. Bring a gift card. I'm like, okay, scam. Bring a gift card? Scam. There's scams all over the place. Once they say gift card, once they say anything like come over, I mean, if you haven't even met them, no, it's that's a scam. Yeah, that and sounds like a trap. There's there's traps all over the place. You just got to be careful with it. I, I can't stand dating apps at all. Are you on any right now? Yes. <laughs> You're, how, how many are you on? Uh, maybe two, but I okay. rarely ever even look at them. I even had other ones that had been installed on my phone that I never even fill out the profile for because I'm like, why? If, I'm, if these aren't working, why would these work? Just because it's a different company. And if you think about it, if you find a match, if, if they help you find someone, they lose a customer. So it doesn't make sense for them, their business, for them to match you. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. I guess, well, I guess that you do bring up a good point there, but there's always somebody else that's going to be joining. So, sure. I mean, you're going to have people fall off. You're going to have people come on, but they don't really focus like, unless you're like match.com or eHarmony. They're not really focused on um, like, hey, let's hear a success story. Right. I have seen that with Match and eHarmony, but literally the last time I signed up for eHarmony, there was like 
I expanded. I, I don't want to date outside of my area. So like 30 miles max, that's even pushing that's, it. Like, that's pushing hey, it. can I do like 30 minutes drive is about all I have in me. But yeah. like, if you think about it, I did that. I did a 30 mile radius. Okay, fine. Oh, there's nobody in your sphere. You have to go and expand yourself. Like I basically had to go into Georgia. I'm like, I am not trying to find somebody long distance. And I've done my fair share of long distance dating. That's not what I'm trying to do anymore. So somebody concentrated in my area because I'm not moving. Yeah. I, I thought I was going to move before for somebody, maybe two people. I'm not moving. I'm, I'm staying here. Somebody has to be here. So that's really big for me. It's, um, it's funny you bring that up because Facebook dating has what you're looking for. And then they have what's called lucky picks. And you could turn off the lucky picks, but they're automatically turned on every day. You could turn them off for a 24 hour period. But when you start seeing profiles that says lucky pick at the top, it means that there's something about them that is out of your scenario. And a lot of times it's out of your driving area. What you don't, I don't want to match with someone in Zephyr Hills. Oh yeah. yeah. Let me tell you about that lucky pick that oh, I got. Yeah. So once I was scrolling and actually I'm not searchable on any of them right now. I took myself pretty much off. I mean, lucky. I, I still, <laughs> I still have uh, people that I've had conversations with and my likes up there, but I'm not searchable. But one time it came up, um, there was, I was matched with women. There's <laughs> nothing on my profile that says I want to meet a woman, not the BFF. I have none of that on my thing. It matched me with the woman as a, you may, um, not your, not this not person falls out with your preferences, but we <laughs> thought you'd be a good match in what I was so pissed off and offended. I'm like, in what world does a straight woman, do you think you're going to push your agenda on me? But anyways, I'm going to go, I'm going to get off of that soapbox. Oh, I was pissed and so offended. But anyways, that lucky pick. Yeah. That was it, your lucky pick. The, oh my gosh. I was so mad. And then at that point, there was somebody I was talking to. So I, um, I made sure we, I got his number and we've been talking off that since then. But I was so mad. Anyway off that soapbox i digress <laughs> so um let me ask you a question so you do you date by the way have you ever date do you like find women in the wild so wild means organically like do you meet somebody organically so anybody that's wondering what dating in the wild means that's what that means do you find anybody dating in the wild i don't particularly try to do dating in the wild why I, is that i because it's hard to approach people now um if they're by themselves, it just feels like everyone's vulnerable. If they're with a group, then it feels like they don't want to be approached. And I just don't feel like that's the way of dating as much anymore. Meeting people out in public. Uh, I mean, if I see someone and I usually will, I will, won't usually like hit on someone right away, but I'll make a comment and I, maybe I'll try to bring up a conversation uh, based upon our scenario and what's going on and maybe pick it up from there. If if it seems like it could lead into a conversation, but if it doesn't, then it doesn't. And I don't really consider that to really be so strong enough to where I would say it's dating in the wild. It's more like just trying to pick up a conversation with a random stranger that you would find attractive and maybe it goes somewhere and maybe it doesn't. Okay. But that, that doesn't really happen very often. I wouldn't say it happens too often. No, no. Do you, is, do you feel like, so Lisa and I talked about this on our first episode. Do you feel like women are mean? I don't think women are mean. Um, I actually don't think a lot of people are mean. Um, I think if you present yourself in the right way, um, everyone will perceive you in the right way. Uh, mm -hmm. Just don't don't overstep and just bring up a compliment, but you know, do it in a nice way, in a nice manner, or bring up a topic that just seems like it's appropriate for your situation. Okay. Now you mentioned you have a solution and I'm clear, curious as to what your solution is to online, to online dating or not online dating. What right. was, what would your solution be? You and Lisa kind of brought it up in the first episode where it was like kind of group dating, but instead of doing dating apps, there's dating groups. Um, Facebook has numerous groups that you could join uh, a lot of singles groups. I'm in a couple of uh, Facebook singles groups. I haven't been to a lot of events yet, uh, only because I keep myself pretty busy uh, just doing my own stuff, just kind of being used to being single for some time. Um, but there's also meetup.com, which I find to be an incredible website that also has singles groups. Um, and I have done events through them. I've done some pretty interesting events through them. Uh, one, one that comes to mind is uh, I was in a singles group and there was an outing that we were going to go to an Airbnb in Orlando. 
uh, just 20 strangers. Just stay for five days. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a very... It's almost like a reality TV show was. type thing. It totally was. And it was amazing. That's we, cool. We would uh, hang out at night and play play games. Uh, there was It was a huge house with, I don't even know how many bedrooms, but like maybe five or six bedrooms. And 20 people, but like there were bunk beds in the kids' rooms. There was two kids' rooms that were like really well designed for kids. Um, there was a game room. There was a pool, a jacuzzi. I mean, the whole nine yards. And it was a lot of fun, you know. That's pretty cool. Making breakfast for people that you don't know. And yeah. I literally made bacon and eggs, and I put the plate next to people while they were sleeping, and it would wake them up. And it was fun. It was nice. cool to just be you know, a good first impression on people. Now, did you make any long-term friends doing that? Uh, just the organizer that we still talk. Okay. And that, that was years ago. That's a really cool idea. They actually. also had a theater room that we watched the Super Bowl in. Okay. Yeah. How long ago was that? Uh, ooh, two or three years ago, maybe. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been single? Uh, I've been single for probably about a year and a half. Okay. Not that long. Not that long, but probably the longest I've had in a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. So you also mentioned to me that there was a comment that you made on a forum, or was it somebody's page, something. Um, would you share that with me? Because you I said did. you regret making that comment and you yes. learned a lot. So this was something that happened very, very recently. Uh, in one of those uh, single Facebook groups, somebody introduced himself with like a profile and said, oh, hi, my name is this, pictures, this is what I'm into. And I made the comment of, uh, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. Why are you single? And, and I thought it was just a genuine compliment. Mm -hmm. And then somebody... Uh, commented on my comment, someone else, who said, uh, you shouldn't do that. I hate it when people do this. Uh, you don't know what she's going through. You don't know why she's single. And and immediately I started getting a little defensive in my mind where like, I'm not sure who you are. The compliment wasn't meant for you. Why are you talking about this? Uh, I was just trying to put a compliment to this person. And at first I thought, who are you to be saying this? And I never, I never replied to her. And I just kind of let it go. And then later on, I saw that someone replied to her uh, comment saying, thank you for saying this. And then I started thinking about, okay, maybe I'm in the wrong. Maybe what I'm saying is the wrong thing. And then it, it just really, it opened up my eyes to where what you say, especially the first things that you say, especially when you've never seen or talked to this person before, is a very strong point where, so, and I, I started realizing Guys say so many of the wrong things with their opening line. So many of the wrong things. Uh, sometimes. So, sometimes. It depends on the person, too. It does. It does. But one, I never, ever actually heard a comment from that person that I complimented. And that's fine. And I don't think that it would have gone positively either way if she would have took either side. Right. So um, when guys open up with saying something like, oh, I love your eyes or, oh, my God, you're so beautiful or... Uh, oh, I love your tattoos or something like that. It's the same stuff that they hear all the time and guys aren't getting that. And I feel like when a guy gets a date, gets their first date, they automatically think that they're dating. They think, okay, well, I'm now dating this person just because I'm going to the first date. Where girls, they're just trying to find someone that they mesh with, that they mingle with, that could even just be a good friend. And if it doesn't work out, they could still be good friends. And I think if guys went in to that first date trying to think this doesn't have to go all the way if i could just be friends with this person if you just go in with that mentality you have a better chance of actually becoming in a relationship with them instead of trying to impress them so strongly with compliments and acting like someone that you're not so i have a thought so i've had that comment to me a lot i mean that that same comment happens all the time and you know it's one of those things that i don't regularly think about like oh oh you're you're so beautiful or whatever um, why, I don't understand how you're still single. I mean, I've had that comment so many times in my life and I've been single for a long time. And it's just one of those things where I just say it's a choice. At this point, it's a choice because it's not as if I am not attractive enough to be with somebody. I'm not, a, you know, I don't have a bunch of issues. I am just super particular with who I'm going to spend my time with. Sure. So when I'm looking for a potential partner, I, I have a really good life the way it is. Yep. So if I'm going to if I'm gonna put somebody in my life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that that person is either going to keep it in the same playing field or it's going to bring me up. Right. There's a lot of people out there that will bring you down in a second. Yes. And I don't want a relationship that's like that. And I see a lot of my friends go through that. Not so much today, 
but I have witnessed it, especially like when I was younger, I used to do this. I would date guys because I just wanted to get married and have kids so bad. Well, now I'm in my forties. That ship has sailed. Yeah. And so it takes off a lot of the pressure and I'm not desperately looking to get married and have children. Right. I would like to be married at Sunday. I don't, I'm not having kids. That's that baby door is closed. Yeah. So it, it takes a lot of pressure off. And quite honestly, if a marriage thing doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I'd rather have a healthy, a healthy relationship compared to, you know, just dating somebody just for the sake of having a warm body. Right. I don't want the warm body. So right. when some people say that to me, when people, when I get that comment, like why I don't understand how you're still single. It's, it's based on, it's my choice at right. this point. Um, I have not found the person that I want to spend that much time with. Right. And that's what I say. Um, but I don't really get offended by it. So, but I guess, you know, depending on what other people are going through and how touchy they are feeling, right. I can kind of see that. But everybody also, I feel like online is so easy to shoot from the hip and just tear somebody yeah. else down, which it sounds like they did. Right. You learn something from that, I did. which is a bonus. But I mean, not everybody's going to have that same reaction. Sure. No, no, I, I don't think so. Uh, I... I'm glad it happened. I'm glad that I made that comment. I'm glad that somebody did dissect that comment for me because all I did was make a compliment based out of looks. I don't know this person. I don't, just like you said, yeah. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what they're going through. Um, maybe they are choosing that way. And instead of saying something like that, I could have further looked at the pictures and be like, oh, it looks like a lot of your pictures are at the beach. I just happen to be going to such and such beach on Saturday around 10 in the morning. Would you like to join me? Yeah. Something like that, a little bit more inviting and, and being more of a person instead of just words coming out of your mouth. Do something that you're, you're offering them an opportunity and you're getting the opportunity to be with them as well. It's a, it's an equal thing to where instead of just, you know, puking out of your mouth compliments that don't mean anything because you don't know them and they don't know you. So the compliments shouldn't really mean that much. But if you say uh, you have a cute dog, would you like to go with me and my dog and we could go for a walk sometime? You know, just have just like a little play date with the dogs or we're going to meet at the dog park. I'm going to the dog park at this time. Would you like to join me? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty fair too. Yeah. Um, another thing that you said was something along the lines of, you know, when a guy goes out with a woman for the first time, he automatically thinks he's in a relationship. But I don't think that that's really the case with a lot of guys. Okay. Because, I, I mean, a lot of the times I go on one date and I know it's not going to go anywhere and they feel it's not going to go anywhere. You just hug and you're like, thanks, nice time, have a good night, you know, and I, you never that's talk a, to him again. That's a great way to end to the first date yeah, if I it's mean, not going to work. If it's not going to work, um, I have yet to find, because if there's not a vibe, there's not a vibe. And most people will generally feel that. Right. Um, there are, are situations where a date can turn into friendships and I've had that happen before yes. too, but you kind of know, like if you want to explore it more at the end or not, and if, if they do, they might feel that you're not wanting to do that, or maybe they'll, you'll even get a call. And I have said to somebody before, I'm very honest. If I don't want to go out again, like, Hey, um, I didn't feel a romantic connection, but you mm -hmm. know, I, I wish you good luck. And I've had a guy said that to me and I really appreciate the honesty. And, That's good. You know, some people like there's, I, I have said that to a guy before and they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know. Like, <laughs> and, but then they're like, I appreciate the honesty, right. you know, and, and that's always a good thing. So, you know, beating around the bush or, you know, stringing somebody along, you know, which we've all done and that sucks too. Right. Um, we've all been that person. We've all done that to people. That's not a cool thing, but um, yeah. So I think you wanted to say, <laughs> what was the douche move of the week? Oh, just me making that compliment to that, that girl that I didn't even know. And thankfully, even though I may have been the douche of the week, I learned something from it, which, you know, if you can learn something from your mistakes, that's a, that's a great thing to do. Absolutely. And I, I don't think you're a douche by any means, but I mean, and I don't think that you're necessarily a douche by complimenting somebody that way, but maybe just be a little more respectful. Like, yeah. Hey, you know, this woman's probably single. She might have, I mean, for all we know, she could have just gotten out of a really shitty relationship. Sure. And she's like, hey, I'm just going to put myself out there. You know, I mean, there's so many different scenarios. And, you know, a lot of people are stuck in unhealthy relationships due to codependency, kids, whatever, finances. Yeah, the economy. And, you know, and then you might escape, you know, that relationship. And then you're like, okay, I'm here, I'm single. And then people are, but I mean, I don't really think that's too douchey. But oh, I, 
No. But I mean, people, it's something to be aware of for sure, yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, so let me ask you mm -hmm. when you are looking either at a profile or, okay, let's start with on a profile. What are the qualities you're looking for in a female partner? Uh, I would say usually something that we have in common. Um, so like even at, like the events at different uh, dating groups, I would say if we're going to do something that I already know that I enjoy, I'd be meeting someone that already enjoys it too because they're going to that event as well. Or at least they're curious to know about that uh, type of event. So if I find someone on a profile that says, oh, I like art or okay, well then that's a good opening line. What kind of art are you interested in? Or, oh, I, I, I like plants or I, I like to play volleyball. I'm like, well, cool. I play volleyball. I've been running a volleyball group for a number of years. Uh, so it's just opens up conversation. If you already have something in common with them, so I kind of look for that in a profile okay, uh, and try to just move past the pictures because honestly, the, the pictures are just on the outside. It's just what I want to know what's on the inside too. But so pictures are what's attracting you to even look at the profile. Absolutely. So what in the picture, like what pictures, what pictures are a turnoff? Pictures are a turnoff. Uh, your, your friend Lisa, I think pointed out or you pointed out, I can't remember, but the, the, Having the, the big breasts right in the middle of the picture, that's that's kind of a Center turnoff. stage, boob yeah. center stage. I'm, I'm not looking you got for your, that. Your that's face and then boobs. <laughs> I mean, I'm not looking for that one night. And if and I'm looking for more than just your, your breasts. I'm looking for more than that. I'm looking for you. So it, I, that's kind of a turnoff. Um, also, pictures, profile pictures, where if the picture isn't even of you, if it's like a just a, a scenery. I'm not interested. Yeah, I want to I know what you look like. That annoys me. I want to know what you look like. When all I see is scenery pictures, you're like, cool. I'm not Where are you? I'm not going to date a building. I don't, right. I don't, a statue, what? I don't know. Yeah. So that's not me. That's I get that. For. Now, if you see somebody out in the wild, what characteristics do you look for? Uh, like if you were going to approach somebody, I know that's not really your thing, sure, but sure. if it were to be, if somebody were to catch your eye, something that, oh gosh, um, I would say that it has to be something that I would, I'm going to use your words, catches your, my eye, but it's usually going to be something that uh, is, if I, if I see that person doing something that's like goofy or just being themselves uh, and, and if I could see them being themselves the most, I'm like, I want to be myself with someone. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to go for a car ride and we're both scream at the top of our lungs singing uh, the same song because we both know the words. I want to know, I want to know what everyone is like on their own, what they, what they normally are like. And if I see someone being goofy, especially out in the public, I know that they're comfortable with themselves and with who they're with. So I like seeing that. That's what I like to see. That catches my eye. Okay. So um, that's really good information because we sometimes don't know what, what catches people's eye. I know for me, it is like looking at somebody, making eye contact, and like, okay, there may be an interest there. Sure. You know, do they look at you again? Are they just looking at their phone? Are they open to be uh, open for a conversation? Are they not? If they're sitting next to you, it's a little easier because you can just say something to the bartender. Or if you're sitting at a bar, I like to eat dinner at a bar because I'm I, a lot of times. Sometimes I'm by myself and I just want to eat dinner and like just go. But sometimes you just have a conversation with somebody, so. Just depends on what you're open to, right? Right. And you point out uh, looking at their phone. I'm not going to be looking for someone who's looking at their phone all the time. No. Um, I, I'm not going to be looking at someone who's not smiling. You know, if you're if you're not having a good time, you're not looking for a person. So um, arms crossed. Oh yeah, yeah. A stern look on your face, or you're just having a bad day. What? RBF. If you're having a bad day, I might like try to like say something to you, like uh, you know, try to give some sort of odd compliment that that might give you a smile just to, to brighten up your day a little bit but that's I, nice i'm not gonna be trying to pick up someone who doesn't look like they're having a good day but just try to bring a smile out to someone and, and you know sometimes bringing a smile out to somebody can really pick them up and start a conversation yeah. you know you never know what just happened right right i've seen those videos of uh, the guy that will just like walk by someone in the park and just leave a little note and and then he just walks away and then they open up the folded note and it says um somebody smiled earlier because of you or or you're doing it keep Aww. going forward i've seen videos like that and it's like pretty cool and inspirational i'm not sure if i'm that guy that could just walk around and pass out notes because again i don't know how that's going to be taken right but i i admire someone that could go out and just and just do that and and 
of course, they only show the, the, the positive outcomes of it. I don't know how many negative outcomes are where someone just throws that note away or whatever, but Get this thing off my yeah, car. I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, the 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 good ones I like I like seeing it. I like the the positive outlooks on things. Just definitely somebody that gives that good message that makes people want to continue their day and, and improve their day. Yeah. So um, I'm going to touch on another topic here, and I want to dive into this with another girlfriend for sure. But there's this list of um, first date. Don't take me here on a first date, according to women. And this list bothers the shit out of me. It bothers me to no end because I think it takes, it takes the expectation of what a first date or a first meet. So there's a list and I meant to print it out. I didn't do it. I didn't do my due diligence. It's so it's in the ethers, but I do have a remembrance of some of the things that this said. And, um, I think it really would depend on whether you have met this person in the wild or if you, um, have met this person online and you're meeting for the first time. You know, Lisa calls it the first meet. I call it the first date. I'm starting to call it the first meet. Um, Me too. But um, as far as like first date, so you're first meeting somebody, okay, online date. You're meeting somebody online. There shouldn't be a lot of expectation right. to, to go on a date. So apparently Cheesecake Factory is a don't take me here for a first date. See in the video. It's so obnoxious. Like, for, well, first off, the girl is in the guy's car. So I think that she might have met him before. And she, but at the same time, you're a pain in the ass. Yeah. You are a pain in the ass. Yeah. And you're probably going to be alone for a long time or you're going to piss somebody off every single day of their life. And she advertised how much of a pain in the ass she is. Yes. She's the one to put it on social media. Yes. So, um, but Applebee's, Chili's, I mean, those are not my favorite restaurants by any mean. I prefer a local mom and pop mm -hmm. or a local restaurant, not a big chain restaurant. Chain restaurants seem to be out of the question. Yes. Um, how do you feel about that? Uh, I strongly feel that I don't want, I don't want to take someone somewhere that they've been to before. I want to create okay. new experiences. I want, uh, I want there to be, uh, certain options to where like, I'm going to take this person here because I know they've never been here. I don't know this person, but I know that they've never been here before because it's, even though it's a really cool place, not a lot of people know about it. Maybe it's hidden downtown somewhere yeah. or maybe it's just out of the range or just, it's just hidden somewhere, a little hole in a wall or mom and pop restaurant. I like to take someone places basically only where they've never been before. Now, what about, how do you feel? So they also said bowling. I think bowling's a lot of fun, but I was talking to some friends and like, it's more fun in a group of friends, not just two people. I would say, yes. Uh, I would say, yeah, bowling's probably more fun with a group of friends. I've also gone on dates, uh, shooting pool. I, I don't recommend it for myself only because I've shot pool too much and, um, you're good. I'm good. And I, it's, it's not, I can't not be good. You know, it's, it's, I can't, I can't just suck for you yeah. just to make you win. I, I don't know. It's like, if I'm trying to be honest with someone and I'm trying to also play us, uh, play a game or whatever, I'm going to, I'm going to play to my potential. So I don't like going to pool halls. I don't like to play pool. Also, it also looks pretty, pretty dorky if I'm taking my own pool stick and I whip out that glove and here I am, I'm the guy that's shooting and I could, I could do this. I can make the ball go around this other ball to make this ball. I don't want to do that. I, that's not me trying to impress someone. That's right. making me feel worse because I'm doing this in front of someone. So game playing, probably not a good idea. Not something that you're really good it, at. Something that you're on an even level with. Right. But they also said like going on a drink. That's like my number one go-to because I don't, I don't do coffee dates. Coffee dates was on there too. If you're not somebody that likes alcohol, coffee date I think would be appropriate for me. Um, I like to go on a drink, I like go meet for a drink because that doesn't, that takes the pressure off. You know, you're relaxing, you're having your drink, um, glass of wine, beer, margarita, whatever your thing is. Sure. Um, they said that was a bad idea. Like that's a no, no. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't want to, I don't want to commit to somebody that I have not met to have a meal with them. Right. Cause I might not want to have a meal with them. Right. So that's my biggest thing, but they had all of the, this list and I wish I had it printed so we can go through it a little bit more, but I don't, but I do want to go through this with another woman to really dive into it because I think this expectation that guys are supposed to take us on the first date or whoever, whatever gender you're dating, um, whoever offers whatever order that goes in, 
I think there's this misconception now, especially with this list, that you're not supposed to go do these casual things. Take a walk. Well, what's wrong with taking a walk? I don't understand. Like what? Okay, we, okay let's not do this, but what to do? How about you give us a list of what to do? And if it says some fancy steakhouse on the first night, that's annoying. That's annoying if I've never met you. Now, yep. we've gone on a couple dates and you really want to you really want to impress, sure, go out to a nice steakhouse. Do up the bar a little bit if you, that's what you want to do. Um, but I, I, I find this list extremely obnoxious. I find most lists obnoxious. And, and not to mention, like, it not only is it obnoxious, but how discouraging is it for males to ask somebody out when they're like, oh, is she going to be the list girl? Don't take me here. <laughs> like, wh where does this expectation come from? This hot, like, raise the bar just to meet you. I, I don't understand. Right. Now, like I said, if I, if I were to meet a guy and I've known him, I've met him before. But if somebody wants to take me to Cheesecake Factory, I mean, there's so many options. There's a lot of options. If you don't know what this person likes, I would hate to work there. To memorize the entire <laughs> menu, that would suck. So I like, uh, I'm not much of a, a dinner on the first date. I don't like that, um, especially because there may or may not be expectations on who's paying the, the bill. I don't mind breakfast uh, because breakfast is usually cheaper and I'm still not that crazy about just going out to eat on the first date because the first date should be the one that you're getting to know the person the most. So I don't mind the drinks as long as it's a quiet atmosphere because there are bars that are very loud. Very loud. There are bars that are very quiet. Mm -hmm. There are outside bars where you could just have a drink and sitting on a stool or, or sitting in a chair outside in their little area. And that's perfectly fine. I love those. Um, also, drinking relaxes you a little bit. So it gets over that, that tense feeling of being nervous around someone new and you're just trying to get to know them. Mm -hmm. So I like those. I, I don't mind coffee uh, um, dates and I don't mind ice cream dates. I think ice cream dates are cool. You just grab some ice cream and you go for a walk downtown. Um, also, second dates, I, I think second dates are great for the walk, the walk in the park, or um, I know a park that has a really nice observation tower. You don't have to walk very far into it, and it overlooks the ocean. Who would not want to go do that, especially if you kind of surprise them and say, here's the, here's the tower, let's go up the tower, you know, and you're going down some trails, and then all of a sudden, here's a big tower, and it's a, it's a great, it's a great, I think it's a great day, or just walking down a pier, and maybe you see a dolphin, maybe you see a manatee, wow. That's pretty cool. So wildlife, I, wildlife usually will win it over as long as everyone likes wildlife, you know, <laughs> and nobody really doesn't like a dolphin or a manatee. So no, that's true. And then maybe a third date would say like, let's go to like an aquarium or let's go do something a little bit more hands on. Let's go rock climbing, uh, in indoor rock climbing or, or let's go to this, uh, small zip lining place where it's not like one of those expensive zip lining places where you just have an, uh, an, an adventure with each other. So you get to know that side of them. So you're learning every date should be learning more about that person so that you get more comfortable with them. Right. First one should be getting to know them verbally, where their past their future, what their ambitions are, who they are. Second one, a little bit more casual, less nervous and just seeing the scenery. And the third one, getting a little bit more hands on with at the activities and just seeing what's out there and just having fun. Yeah. That sounds like a pretty good idea. So um, thanks, James. Mm. That's about all the time we have for today. So I really hope this podcast is shedding some light on different perspectives, as well as how to improve dating and good communications, um, communication skills, so that we can find and maintain healthy relationships and satisfying relationships. So don't forget to subscribe and like on YouTube. That is my main platform right now before I add it to other places um, when I get the time to do that. Um, and if you guys have any feedback, please leave comments for us. And also, if you would like to be on the episode or have a really good idea, please email me at sunflowerstolisa at yahoo.com. Um, so that's all we have today. And I look forward to seeing you next week when we go down the rabbit hole of dating and relationships. Thanks, James. Thank you.